Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed. And another watch that I want to bring you here today, a little bit of a story behind this one. This is a mint, unused, in box, 19 sort of 70s or thereabouts, National Semiconductor LCD watch. Now, this kind of came to me, um, I've had this about 10 years, not even looked at it to be honest um, basically I bought a camera from a guy that was doing a house clearance and in one of these his other listings was this brand new new in box 1970s national semiconductor watch um, and I put a bid on it it was 99 pence you know it's one of those things where you put on completely forget about it and I won it and then it came it came to me and I completely sort of just put it into a drawer wasn't really interested in it at the time but I did know that it was um, looking pretty much as new and I did by the look of it oh there we go it looks like I did take the battery out which was a sort of central sen sensible precaution shall we like so I mean here it is um, National Semiconductor I mean an American company of course founded I think around about 1959 and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously making electronic sort of components, I believe they were sort of become quite famous because of the sort of chips that they put into the first IBM sort of PCs. I think that's what launched them on the sort of road of success. But they tried lots of different sort of other markets. And um, yeah, I think they lasted to about 2011. By that stage, I think they had about 6,000 employees and eventually they were bought out by Texas Instruments, which is, you know, a bit of a shame, but the sort of spirit of the company has lived on. So this watch in itself, yeah, I remember when I sort of first got this. I mean, it is literally in brand new condition. Very difficult to date this watch. I have looked on the internet. There are sort of a few of these watches about. It seems they sort of kept this style of watch going for quite a few years. And uh, also like National Semiconductors, like all a lot of other manufacturers, basically just sort of you know jumped in on the bandwagon of the led watches when they first launched in the early 70s and there was actually an led watch that was also in this same sort of body style and then later on obviously the leds didn't last particularly long because of the high battery drain in fact you had to keep pressing them to read them and then lcd kind of sort of came along and lcd for a while was sort of kind of a sort of a, a, a novelty sort of high by a brand item you know have an lcd watch was really something but of course nowadays you know and it has been for the last 25 years we'll say lcds is a cheap sort of disposable watch you know it's just something that's not really sort of well certainly not treasured and even now in 2019 lcd is yet to become collectible these watches are still incredibly sort of cheap to sort of pick up and they seem to last better than the led watches the, the sort of the internal sort of uh, sort of chips and things inside and the crystals do seem to sort of last sort of better so try to date this watch difficult i think it's mid 70s i think looking at google uh, national semiconductor from about 1972 started outsourcing the internals to Malaysia, uh, the case went to sort of Hong Kong, and then I believe to about 75 it went to sort of Bangkok. So depending on what the uh, sort of insight, I think I think this is about a mid 70s, about a 74, 75, something like that. So as I say, I don't know if it works. It came to me, it was in a, dis a state, it just didn't work, and the battery was obviously discharged, and I did take the battery out as a precaution. And one thing's worth noting, the cheap, cheap dumbass strap that they've put on it you can tell that when they got to this stage of the game you know they were really competing with hong kong sort of cheap watches coming in and this is a really really sort of cheap and nasty strap it doesn't really sort of go along with the construction of the rest of the watch because you have got sort of a stainless steel back here and uh, they, yeah they really did put a cheap and nasty sort of strap on it but anyway let's just open I, i've obviously been inside here 10 years ago yeah i've got it a little bit stiff um, but I say whether it works or not, I don't know. Um, let's have a quick look inside. I can check the battery. There we go, that sort of pops off. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> That's quite interesting, actually. That's fairly not nicely made. I mean, that's a bit, that's certainly, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting the bare sort of minimum. But uh, that's quite interesting. You've got all of this sort of. Uh, I don't know, just grounding if you like, going, all, going on around the outside here. As the, uh, the battery looks, I think battery goes in there. There's a little sort of uh, connector there that I have to sort of put in. And that's sort of like you've got the main chip on the board. 
But it's, yeah, a typical sort of 19, sort of 70s, you know, it, it does seem a slightly sort of better quality than you sort of got in the later 80s. I can see as well there's a little tiny trim pot there, which is what I had on the uh, Trafalgar LED watch that I tried to resurrect a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, wasn't able to do that. Hopefully we get some more success here. But yeah, overall, that's, um, that's better quality than I thought. It's certainly than the, than the strap would indicate. Obviously the money they spent on the inside of the watch, they couldn't sort of carry on to give you a proper leather strap. So as I say, I have got the batteries in the box. I've looked at it, it's a nine, I think it's a 993. So I'm gonna just pop down to my local Sainsbury's because they do actually do quite a wide, nice variety of little watch batteries. They also do silver oxide batteries. So I'm gonna try and get a silver oxide battery and I'll pop back, so stay with me and we'll see if it works. Right, I'm back, although well, it's no difference for you people. Um, yeah, it turned out it was a V393 battery, so I did manage to get a silver oxide um, Varta battery from my local shop, so that's good. And it cost three pounds and five pence, which is three times what I paid for the watch. So the battery costs three times the watch. Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? So I've got this little tiny spring clip here to put in. So anyway, I'm gonna just um, sort of fit the battery in. I'll do it off camera, because it's a little bit fiddly. And then we'll see if it works. Fingers crossed, let's everything's crossed, let's hope it works. And uh, anyway, let's do that. Right, that's the uh, battery. And that was a little bit more sort of fiddly than it needed to be, really. I don't know why they, just, they didn't have that connected. You had to sort of put that in afterwards. So we're just gonna put the back on. It's a nice screw fit. It's not one of these sort of pop-on uh, affairs. Just gonna uh, do that by hand and then we'll turn it over in a moment of truth. Had this for 10 years, of course. Oh, Sally, it's working. Can you see that? We've got some seconds. And there you go. Um, but that's really, really working. I'm quite, quite impressed. <laughs> what I like about these very early LCD watches is they're so kind of genuine. You know, there's, there's, there's no chronograph, there's no sort of alarm or anything like that. It's just a watch. That's what it is. You know, you press that, you get the tight date, press it again, you get the seconds. And that takes you uh, takes you back to the time. So uh, I'm just going to set it to the sort of today's time. So of course, with, with these old watches, the same as the LED ones, you had to use a sort of a biro pen there, just to sort of push it into the side. And that goes to there. I won't bother with a date. There we go. And oh, that goes that goes to the time. So it does take a time. Um, you had to be a bit patient back in the day. We are talking 40 years ago, of course, but it does take a bit of a time to set it. So we'll do about 24 and press that again. And then I think it will, so it's 9.24 and I think to start the actual watch working, we just have to press that through the date and then it starts, and it goes. So, I mean, there you go. I mean, it's 40 years old, at least 40 years old. And uh, yeah, I don't, think I don't think they're worth a great deal. I wanna have a look on eBay just to sort of see what they're worth. But yeah, new old stock, 40 year old watch. And uh, yeah, it's, it's got quite a nice sort of charm. I wasn't all that kind of impressed with it 10 years ago, but these things are sort of starting to get kind of a little bit more interesting, especially being in this sort of such great condition as well. Literally, it's lit straight near out of the box. I'll probably, I think I'll probably, in this strap is awful. Um, I think I'll invest in a sort of a cheap, leather strap and uh, yeah do you know what i might start sort of wearing it so there you go national semiconductor 1970s lcd watch bought on ebay for 99p and <laughs> stuck in a drawer for 10 years completely forgotten about and there it is so just thought i'd show you that it's nice i've actually got one that works i've not been too successful recently but yeah, there we go. So cheers, as always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you wanna see more watch stuff and other stuff that I do, hit that subscribe. Do really appreciate that. But uh, that's for now. Thanks, thanks for watching, cheers, stay safe. And of course, I'll catch you all on the next one.